guys, um, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I was supposed to film this two weeks ago, and I am just filming it now. But I got a tripod and a ring light, but at the same time, the ring light keeps turning off. So, there's gonna be a lot of editing in this video, and it's gonna be really annoying, but I apologize in advance, but it's gonna be my first YouTube video. Um, if you guys don't know a little bit about me, I, um, have a jewelry business. I'm gonna put all my information in my description, all my other social medias, stuff like that. But to get started, um, my first video is going to be about scoliosis. I know a lot of people are affected by scoliosis, and I just want to share my story. Because I feel like my story could really, really help people. So, let's get started with the video. I apologize, we had a location change because my guinea pig was screaming. Okay, so now we're in my room. We have my ring light finally working, hopefully. So basically, I want to get started. So, I was diagnosed with scoliosis on my 12th birthday so like sixth grade yeah it was in sixth grade i either was turning 11 or 12 i can't remember i should know this you know but it's fine um and i'll tell you like how it happened so basically i went for my yearly checkup and through the whole appointment my doctor was like doing this on my shoulders like my shoulders were up here and he was like pushing out on them and i was like what's going on you know and i absolutely love my doctor we've been with him since i was born and he's a great pediatrician um and i noticed that was the first thing weird and then he asked me to like touch my toes i like, lifted my shirt in an inappropriate way obviously no um but you know basic scoliosis check is they run their they look on your spine and see if there's a curvature and he said you know i think you have scoliosis and i was like what is that i didn't know what it was at the time um and I also apologize to my parents. I like just got out of the shower not that long ago and I really needed to sit down and film this. So that's why I'm kind of like a mess. Um, but anyways, so he checked me for that and he found out I had scoliosis and he was like, you need to go get x-rays right away and we need to make sure it's not super bad. And so that day we like scheduled x-rays and I just like sat there like, what is scoliosis? And I asked him all these questions and he told me like what it was and what are the treatments and stuff like that and I was so scared because I was a dancer like dancing was my thing and my immediate thought was oh my god I'm gonna have to give up dance I'm never gonna be able to dance again because I was so scared I was young it was literally my birthday I was just so scared um and basically I think I got my x-rays that day or like a few days after and um my ring light cut out so i had to fix that but anyways um i think i'm x-rays that day or like the day after i'm not sure and we waited i think they gave me a disc they did give me a disc and i have it somewhere um and i remember my beginning degrees the top my thoracic was 19 and then my lumbar was 16. so then he was like you know i think you should go to a specialist just because it is on the higher range i was like okay and you know, during this time, I was at home on Google, just typing away, doing all my research, stuff like that. And some of the stuff I found, like um, halo therapy, if you know what that is, um, that scared me. Surgery itself scared me. I was horrified. Like, anyways, but um, so we went and saw the specialist. And I'm not going to say names because I'm not just going to give that away. But I did go to Johns Hopkins. And, um, I will say I did not have a good experience. I really did not. I know a lot of people have different experiences with different doctors, but I just did not have a good experience. And I will get into why. So, basically, we started my treatment there. They were like, you know, I think the best option is bracing. And at the time, my parents and I were still in shock of what was going on. Like, you know, we were just doing whatever anyone said for us to do. Um, like any normal parent would, you know, I would have done the same thing my parents did. I'm not mad at them by any means. Um, so they were like, you know, I think you need to go into bracing. I was like, okay, like how long am I supposed to wear it? They were like 23 hours a day. And I was like, 23 hours a day and a plastic back brace. All right. Um, so yeah, that was a little crazy. Um, when I first heard that and then after that appointment they scheduled me with the 
orthopedic, like the orthotic place. I can't English, but they scheduled me there and they had me fitted for a brace. Let me tell you, they put like a cast on my body, like my like, down to my butt. And it was a really weird feeling. Like it was so weird feeling. So I was just stuck there just <laughs> for like a solid like 10 minutes just letting it dry and then they took it off. And then we left, they molded my brace. And that summer of sixth grade going into seventh, uh, that August, I got my back brace, my first back brace. And I will go grab it. Okay, so this was my first brace I received. Let me, there we go. So it was white, look how small it was. So this is what it looked like, um, 360 view. So I look like this. I went under here. I'm not gonna put it on. I still fit it, but it hurts, obviously. This, like, made my hip look a certain way, and I don't like it. So, basically, let's get back into the rest of the video. Um, so, I started wearing it, and it was awful. Let me tell you, it was so awful. It hurts so bad. Um, I just remember constantly getting rashes. I cleaned it nonstop. I was, like, a clean freak about it. But I still get these rashes, I still got bruises, I still just, it's a lot of pain. And wearing it 23 hours a day was kind of a not acceptable thing. Considering my curve wasn't growing 20 degrees per week, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like that bad. But, um, so fast forward a little bit, I'm in 7th grade. Keep in mind, in 6th grade, I was going through a lot. I, uh, lost some friends, there was a lot of petty middle school drama. Um, I lost my grandparents. I lost three of my grandparents in this time period. So there was a lot going on. My mental health was just, it was decreasing. Um, and it's understandable. I mean, I just found out in my back, my back, I just had a stroke there. I'm sorry. Um, and all this other stuff is going on. So anyways, um, we're in seventh grade now. Okay. Um. And we just go back for like three, four month checkups, I think. I'm not sure exactly how long was in between there, the checkups, but basically I went for one and they were like, you know, your back is just, it's getting worse. And I remember, I think at that time it had reached both of them in the twenties, maybe the low thirties. That time period was super blurry for me. So I don't remember the exact degrees. I only really remember the now and like kind of blurry memories but I just remember the degrees being around there um and they were like I think it's best if you you know get a different brace so what did I do I got fitted for another brace um this one I have it right here I decided I wanted to get it all fancy and um it is pineapple not pineapple, it's like Caribbean themed. But this one is significantly bigger. You can see that it just, it, it stuck out of everything. And you know, other people out there with braces now, like, I just, I, I don't know how I did it. I really don't. Um, but this one was 10 times more painful. <laughs> um, they have a special adjustment in here that can go tighter. And they had it really tight. And, you know, I don't know if other people's bracing places track their, like, how many hours a day they wear it, but mine did. And I obviously wasn't wearing it enough because who would want to wear a back brace 23 hours a day? It's ridiculous. Anyways, fast forward to 8th grade year. Still wearing this brace. Still progressing a little. I've had to edit this video so many times because my, like, cut out again but yeah so I was in eighth grade it was still progressing and we had reached a point with them the doctors it was eighth grade it was July after I left that school and I was in their office and they did my like final checkup and this makes me a little emotional not gonna lie they looked me in the eyes and they were like I'm sorry, we don't know why you're in pain, but there's nothing else we're gonna do and can do. And hearing that, I got in the car and I just cried because I felt so hopeless. You know, I was already going through so much at the time and you look to doctors to give you hope. And at that time, they just, 
gave me no hope and I just remember just like sitting there like what do I do like what do I do now do I just live with it like this I mean in there they told me it's not gonna get any much worse so, the lights making me so annoyed it just keeps cutting out but they told me it wasn't gonna get worse here I am in junior year <laughs> so about a year ago my pediatrician had told me he thinks I should get a second opinion and we never did because our insurance kind of sucks and we don't have the extra money to just, you know, go to random doctors. Um, but the last visit I went to him in May, he was really concerned. Um, he said, you know, Elena, I think it's getting a lot worse. Um, cause it's, it's very nice when I have a very bad rib hump on both sides. I have a really bad, uh, hip curve too. Um, I'm gonna insert some pictures also, so I'm gonna show you guys some pictures of like my back looks. I switched lighting because my light's being really annoying, but anyways, so we did research. My mom joined scoliosis groups on Facebook, and we researched all these other procedures and physical therapy, but here I am still in a lot of pain. I'm in so much pain on a daily basis that I've been sleep deprived for like three years now, two to three years. I'm now on sleep meds to try and help me sleep. Um, I just want to kind of like get off the subject a little, but it kind of does relate. Um, going through all this so quickly, not only with scoliosis, but with everything going on at home, it really messed me up. I not only have a lot of self-confidence issues because of my scoliosis, I now have depression and anxiety because everything I've kind of gone through with it and it all ties together like um, middle school was super blurry time for me um, and scoliosis was one of those things that just you know it added on to the stress middle school is a stressful time for everyone but especially when you find out you have scoliosis and you need to wear a back brace you have to give up dance your grandparents are dying you're going through like drama um, it was such a hard time and I look back and I don't know how I made it out of there. Um, but back onto the scoliosis. So, yeah, I met this new doctor. His name is Peter Gabos. He's out of Numerous um, Children's Hospital in Delaware. And we went, and I already, I was tearing up in the office because number one, my dad couldn't come in because COVID right now. And number two, I already knew, like, I just knew that it was such a much better experience. They were treating me. Like, I was one of their kids type of thing. Um, so, Mr. Gabos had informed me that my spine, it was um, 46, like, 44 to 46 degrees in my lumbar and, like, 38 to 40 on top. They said there's, like, a range that him and his uh, physician's assistant saw. So, I'm in the gray area of scoliosis, sadly, um, where they can't quite do surgery yet. I mean, they can. But they don't want to jump into it right away. But what we're doing is he wants to wait a year. And he thinks in that year period it will move. We already think it's moved. I've been in a lot of pain lately. And it's along my spine, the pain I'm having. So I'm sure it has moved already. But he looked back at my degrees when I stopped wearing the brace. And when I'm now, where I am currently with the 40, over 40 degrees on both. I had to pause this video so many times because of this stupid light. Um, but anyways, so he said he can't tell if the dramatic increase in my curves were because I stopped wearing the brace and it did a rebound curve because he said he sometimes sees that or if it's actually progressing. So that's why we're waiting a year. We're going to go back to him around like next September. It's one of those days like September 24th, 23rd. I'm not sure. But in a year from now, we'll find out if I'm getting back surgery. So I'm really excited because I want it to be fixed. And right now, I am working on helping to get stronger. And I'm looking at my uh, picture right here, and it makes me really upset. And I'll tell you guys why I'm upset with Johns Hopkins. So in talking to Dr. Gabos, he was very kind of disgusted at how I was treated. And it makes me really upset because I know there's a lot of kids and parents out there who have been mistreated very badly <laughs> in some of these situations. And this video is to not at these doctors. It's not to like specifically at them. 
but you know what I went through was pretty crappy it really was and I just want to share my story with others so if people are going through the same thing if they can relate and if I can help them then that's what I want to do so basically in talking to Gavos he was like 23 hours a day no 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 he, he scoffed at it and when I showed him a picture of my braces he scoffed at them too he was like what no these are just not he was like the braces i wore were a super old and should be out they're like outdated braces that i wore and at the time like i said we were just doing what the doctor said and he also said if you tell a child to wear a back brace 23 hours a day they're not gonna do it and they're gonna wear it even less which is exactly what happened with me um, he said the right amount you're supposed to tell them is 12 to 16 or even 12 to 18 hours because that's a more reasonable amount and it gives them a little more leeway where they can wear it like at night and then like during the day when they're not in school which is exactly what should have happened to me but I got super stressed out and I didn't wear it enough probably and he even said you know even wearing it like 23 hours every day mine still would have gotten worse like there was no way it just wasn't it's just how it was progressing and a few more things we found out along the way is that mine is genetic it is not because of my growing my grandmother actually had it pretty bad she had a 60 degree something curve i'm learning more about that now but um basically i found it interesting how when i was first diagnosed my thoracic was a lot worse than my lumbar and now my lumbar is worse but um if I get surgery in here, it's my senior year, and I'm a little upset because I know that it's going to be hard, but I'm already working towards getting strong. So if I do have surgery next year, um, I'll be super strong for recovery. Um, it just makes me really upset on how I was treated. I look back and I was in a really dark place, and I know a lot of people are also kind of at that place and it makes me really upset um and I was really going through it I looked up like you know youtubers posting about their scoliosis I wanted to learn more and it made me really sad at the fact that there wasn't a lot of people sharing their story that's why I'm here sharing my story because I feel like I could really help someone one day I hope to help someone um that's kind of the basics of my scoliosis journey there's a lot more in there um there's a lot more events that happen like I had a two and a half hour long MRI because I thought I had a tumor um I didn't thankfully it was just because it's genetic um and what else happened in there there was a lot and I'll maybe go into it another video but that's the rundown of how I got diagnosed with scoliosis and where I am now. I am so thankful to have found numerous though. Like, I have so much hope now. I really do. Even if I don't have surgery next year, which I firmly believe I'm kind of on the way to that. And if it happens, it happens. You know, things happen for a reason. Um, but if anyone is experiencing something, what I went through, like where they were like super mistreated, um, and stuff or if they have similar like pain um or if they just want to talk please let me know in my comments and i will literally reach out to you i love talking to people about scoliosis their experience and my experience we just kind of share stories back and forth um and it's really inspiring to hear from other people um i really hope i can inspire someone by my video um i kind of look like a mess i know i know um this is my first ever youtube video we've had a lot of complications with my lighting but that's all right um and i hope everyone really enjoyed it i hope everyone can finally understand the way i am you know learn more about me um i said um a lot that's something you gotta learn but yeah i hope everyone enjoyed the video thanks for watching click subscribe like it give it a thumbs up Follow all my other social medias. I will be putting them in the description below. Check out my jewelry page. I make jewelry. Uh, what else? Yeah, I have an Etsy. I have TikToks. And I'll put that all below. Um, add me on Snap. We can talk. Add me on Instagram. DM me. 
ask me questions, all that type of stuff, okay? Um, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Hey, guys. It's me again. Um, the video's not over, surprise. I went to my surgeon, and he actually confirmed that my back got worse, and that it's not unethical to do surgery, and that I'm probably going to get it next year. Well, I am. I'm not probably, I am getting it. Just depends when I want to do it. Anyways, that's the end of the video. I'll make another video about my last appointment. Goodbye.